let's start. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tineke Rense. I'm uh, from Powerful Business Academy. I help business women to scale and grow their business and double their business within a year, guaranteed. And now today's topic, today's topic is um, all about content creation. And we did have quite a few questions and I'm always happy to answer your questions, as you know, because you're giving the input here for me to be able to serve you. So this is a question uh, from Helen. Helen says, I put out photos of the gifts I have made or are making. I struggle with content. Um, what Helen does is she uh, does crochet and knitting and she uh, sells the things that she creates. We already discussed this once. Eh? For you, the content is very much about images and making sure that the images are featured nicely. Now, I had a conversation with a lady this morning and she showed me her Instagram shop and it did not really look very professional. I, don't, I gave you some tips at some point. I don't know if you have uh, used them, but this lady was using the same background all the time and she had a white plate, but it was an iron. She was using her coach, her couch, and I could see it was the couch. So first of all, you need to make sure that all your images are highly professional. And you can go on fiverr.com, select remove the background and um, in the criteria and the selection criteria, you can say maximum budget $5. And you can find people, and of course you need to open quite a few offers. You can find people who, who easily do like five to ten images for you and enhance them so that they will look a lot nicer. But that's all about images. Now, this is also about content. Content can be about explaining things, about asking questions, about giving tutorials. So in your case, have you ever considered, besides selling uh, the things that you create, selling the process, the making of, so that you don't sell uh, the items, but that you sell the pattern? So that is one of the options um, that, that I can uh, offer you. It, it would be very nice if you also show um, why are you making this. Um, so it's important for people to know why you do what you do. Why do you love knitting? Why are you selling those things? Is it because you want to make money? Well, that's not something your clients like to hear. Is it because you're so passionate? Is it because you can't work and that you're on the couch all day because you're ill? And that's why I, I don't know what your story is. So that your story, why you do what you do, is very important. And that is for everybody if you create content. So I hope this has helped you and that I've given you a few more ideas. And it does take time, uh, Helen, to tweak. Um, I remember that you answered me after our session about uh, high-end uh, programs. Your website does not look high-end yet. Uh, so um, you said, oh, now I understand why I can't sell to high end. And there's no problem. If you don't want to sell to high end, it's totally okay. Okay. Next question I, uh, I got. How to come up with themes or concepts for content? Do I really need to post every day? I'm running out of ideas. So running out of ideas, <clears throat> what you can do is interview clients and ask them why did they buy, what do they love about your product, why do they love your service. So also for you, it's very important to explain to people why you do what you do. That's always uh, the, the drive, eh? that's, that's important. Um, like I said, interview people, interview your clients. Eh? If you have a Facebook group, of course, you can ask people. We uh, do polls weekly and we ask what content do you want me to and what questions do you want me to uh, talk about? What topic do you want me to talk about in the Facebook Live? And then uh, women start to uh, answer uh, this topic, this topic, this topic. And then we uh, ask how many are interested in that topic. 
And then we put out a topic on Monday and you ask questions. So that's our strategy to come up with content. Now, the videos of the live, they are recorded. What we do is, I have a tool, it's called Happy Scribe. I bought it uh, for a lifetime deal at some point, but you can also do this, I think, for free with YouTube. Um, transcribe your video. Then you have uh, your Facebook Live or a video that you make or record. And then you can extract it, you can create the MP3 of it, you can create a video of it, and you can download the, the copy, the content. And that content you can use. So I used to create a video every week and do a Facebook Live every week. That was more work. What we do now is we do one Facebook Live and from the Facebook Live we create the video. It's transcribed and we edit it and we, we modify it of course. That's the blog. You will always have it first. So here in the group it's always you're the first one to hear the, the content. But on other social media channels, next week or the week after, we have an edited video of this Facebook Live. We will have an edited blog of the content and we will create visuals of it. So that's our system. So you always, and we upload the, the MP3 on my podcast platform. You should always duplicate and reuse copy. For example, uh, I have been written, writing blogs for years. Uh, I'm not writing my blogs anymore myself at the moment, but we are now starting to reuse blogs that are over a year old. It's because I have so many new followers and so many new people uh, in, in the group, we, we can reuse it. That's not a problem. Coming up with content, basically it's asking your clients, it's asking your tribe, and it's you trying to forecast what they want to hear. Running out of topics, it doesn't really matter. Um, like, like I told you, I am reusing my content, so it doesn't matter if you run out of topics when it's half a year later, people don't remember. Social media is going that fast, it's going that quick. People see it very, very quickly and then they, they move on. So don't bother if, if, if you have content for half a year or a year, you just, just start to reuse it. So I hope that helps you. And there, there are other, uh, other tips. You, you can look what other uh, people in a similar area where they post about. So when you join groups of competitors or conculeagues, uh, see where they post about and then you can do the same. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with copying. There's something wrong with starting to sell in their group. That's not nice. But when you copy what they do and uh, use it for your own tribe, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? So that's how you can get ideas. I am also getting lots of ideas of people who enter my group because you always need to answer questions when you enter my group. Next one, creating daily content is so much hard work and I don't like doing it, but I can't really afford to outsource. Do you have any tips to make it easier? Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of things that you need to do when you run a business and if you don't like doing things, there's a few things around this. You, you can force yourself and do it anyway. That's what I used to do for a long time and that's the, the, the sports athlete mentality. I can't say when eh, I was in a couple of national teams, I couldn't say, well, today I don't feel like doing it. And my coach would say, well, uh, stuff it. Uh, you need to work on your exercises. So that's one way. And that's called creating discipline. Do it anyway, no matter what your thoughts say. Don't entertain the thoughts. It's very, very important because if you start to entertain the thoughts, you start to feel like not doing it. There's always a thought first and you can change your thought and then the feeling change. So if you can say, well, you know, ah, today I'm going to create copy. Let's see what we are going to create today. That makes you feel completely different than, I don't like doing it. See what happens? I'm looking down, my voice lowers. That's the first thing. So flip around the thoughts you have around it. The next thing is, wait until you like doing it. I never love cleaning my house and I never will love cleaning my house. But um, 
at some point I know it needs to start, I need to start doing something. So I created sort of a consistency, I do it in the weekend, but then I usually wait until I like to start, uh, and that's usually Sunday afternoon at some point, so definitely not on Saturday, because then I'm so happy that it's weekend and that I don't need to do anything or must do anything. So um, wait until you start to feel like doing it. That is really something that works. Um, and because that's when you will be in the now and that's when you will be creating momentum. That's also when you will be inspired. And when you're inspired, it goes effortlessly, it goes easily. At that time, you can do so much more in an hour than when you don't love doing it. And then you can uh, wait for those moments and then just create for the whole month. And then you know, start to see what happens then, because then you really feel relieved, you're proud of yourself, you see it every month, you see it every day. But don't, when you see it every day, allow the thought, oh no, in two weeks I need to start doing it again. Don't allow those thoughts. Um, I can't afford to outsource. I think often that is a mindset. Um, I outsource for five dollars an hour or sometimes even less. Uh, so that's, that's really, um, you, if you hire an expert um, f for, for that amount of money, they can create content for a whole week in an hour. It's, it's, it's not a lot of money. So if you really cannot flip your thoughts, and I think everybody can, that's where you need discipline. It's training, it's mental training. It's gonna come all the time and you need to be able to track it. Ah, I'm seeing it, flip it around. Um, but still, if you can't do that, I always uh, say to my clients, you need to do what you're good at and what you love doing. If you do things that you don't love, your energy drops and you can't use the law of attraction, you can't create and manifest and draw things within your sphere. What advice can you give to help people who don't like making videos? Or being on videos you can um, well I don't know if you watch my videos uh, I did a photo shoot I, I have like I have videos like this eh, where I'm live and where you see me speak but I also have videos where you will hear my voice you see what I say and you will see an image of me so those are short videos we made them weekly to introduce the new blog content and it's, it's template images with uh, text and we just add them after uh, one another. And so every week we have two videos, a video uh, which is a little advertisement about the blog and the video where you really see me in action. Um, and yeah, I didn't like to make my first video, but that's, that's, that's many years ago. I think it's five, six years or even longer ago. So it, you also have to get used to it and you have to get out of your comfort zone. But still, if you don't like doing it, that's a way to start. Create, so have some nice images of you with some nice poses, uh, add text and speak out the text so that um, my assistant adds the MP3 uh, towards to the, um, the template images and then he makes sure that resonates. All right. I'm too shy to be on video, but you're not too shy to have the videos the way I just told you, because then you're not live, you're not like this, it's a beautiful picture of you, there's a quote, you are uh, speaking about the quote, nobody sees you, they just hear you. So that's another uh, way of creating videos. And too shy, you know, um, I used to be like that, you might not believe it, but um, everything, everything grows. It's just start, start with something, do it with friends. And although they are, they're usually the biggest critic casters, so they might not give you the best advice. Um, next is share tips on making engaging content. So engaging content is um, only possible when you know your clients inside out. So you, you really need to know who your clients are. What are their problems? What do they love? What don't, don't they like addressing? 
What do they want to hide from? What kind of words do they use? What kind of images they, they feel attracted to? What kind of colors they feel attracted to? All those things are important when you want to start creating engaging content. So engaging also is sharing things about yourself. So we just uh, published one of my older blogs. It's called 10 Scams of uh, Business Coaching, I think. It's about many programs, programs that I've paid for, trainings, coaches, mentors, um, writing a book, public speaking, uh, online marketing, webinars, whatever, and my experience with it. Uh, so sharing your own stories, your own struggles, your own experience, your own highs, your own lows about your family sometimes. I'm not sharing many pictures of my kids because my kids don't want me to. So I respect that, but I talk about them. So um, don't be shy to open up. Don't be shy to, to share who you are. Um, and also if you don't know something, you know, you don't have to know everything. I'm, I get, uh, I mean, one of my uh, team members, uh, he's now learning a lot about uh, search engine optimization. And I know a bit about the basics, but he now is a lot further. Uh, so when I don't know, I just ask him. Um, but for my clients, um, he is now pretty uh, pretty good and can start doing it ourselves. So we can start to offer SEO uh, pretty soon. Um, so yeah, um, engaging, it, it needs to be attractive to your ideal client. And to know who your ideal client is, you really need to do some, some, some searching. You need to interview them. You need to uh, answer a lot of questions. It's one of the exercises I always do before I start half a year with my clients. I do a whole day and during the whole day, one of the things we do is look at all the offers you have. But first of all, look at your ideal clients and are they the right clients for you when you want to scale or do we need to start targeting new clients? And if that's the case, do we need to start repositioning yourself? And then we can start to create engaging content for this new audience. Can I share tips about outsourcing content? I want the content to still be me, even though others are doing it for me. So when uh, I outsource all my content, except this of course, uh, but my assistant will be writing a blog of it, she will be editing the video of it, um, my other assistant will add the mp3 somewhere, the way I started when I started outsourcing my uh, content, and that was because I, I could not um, give consistency. And I thought, well, consistency is very important. So what I did is, first of all, I started uh, screening a few copywriters and on Fiverr.com, that's very easy. So I picked uh, people who would write a blog for five or 10 euros and I picked four or five. I all paid them and gave them exactly the same instructions. So you do need to give instructions. And my instructions were to uh, content, who I am, who my clients are, but were also uh, SEO, uh, the tone of the, um, the, the copy, the content, uh, the keywords uh, she was supposed to use. And then I just looked, hey, which person I resonate the most with? I selected. Can they deliver in time? Can they follow all of my instructions? It was a list of about 10 bullet points and most of them didn't do all of them. So if they can't, I'm not going to work with them. So for me, it's not only important how well they uh, write the content so that it looks like me. For me, it's also very important. Can they work consistently and can they follow instructions? And is it easy for me to work with them? And then before something is put out, you, you're the one who authorizes it. So you're the one who eventually decides, this is what I like, this is what I don't. And if you don't like it, you can give feedback. You can say, hey, I want this changed, I want that uh, changed. I also do that with my blogs. My assistant, she perfectly knows what I love, uh, what content I like, how I love it. And still, I sometimes um, give comments to what she, but, uh, to what she creates. 
But the comments for me is only five minutes. Her creating a, a, a complete blog with SEO and everything takes her one to two hours. That's not what I need to do. All right? Okay, what tools I use to create content? Um, uh, I have a, a video tool which is called Happy Scribe. I use that tool to, to write out all the videos and that's uh, copy. Um, we do have a tool, but I don't remember the name, where I will add a few topics and it automatically creates a blog, but that's, uh, it grabs it from all over the internet. Um, there are tools out there, so you, you, can, you can look and, and say auto-create blog content. If that's what you look for, you will probably find a few tools. Someone also pitched me uh, at some point a tool like that. Um, but at the moment, uh, I still prefer uh, the, my assistant to create them because what she writes really resonates with me. She knows me. I have tools to post, uh, post social media. We use Publer.io. Uh, that's, that's about it. That's the tools that I use. So before I finish, um, just know that you can always reach out to me and schedule a 15 minute call. The 15 minute call is not for me to sell to you. The 15 minute call is to find out who you are, what your business is about. And for you, if, if you want to, uh, to ask me some questions. Um, and after that 15 minute, we, we can decide, hey, do, do we like each other? Do we trust each other? Um, can I even help you? Because I can't help you if you only focus on uh, consumers. Um, it's, for me, it's very easy to help business women scale and grow when you work with other businesses. And if you now work only with consumers, um, where are the groups of consumers? So I'm always looking for how to make scaling and selling more easy. So schedule that 15 minute call and also go to my YouTube channel because on YouTube there's a lot of videos that I've been recording even before I had the Facebook group. Subscribe Powerful Business Academy and uh, there's, there's lots of videos. There's videos about me interviewing international business women on how to do business internationally. Um, thank you so much for joining and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talk to you again next week. Bye!